Spring is in the air, the flowers are in bloom, and tonight I'm using boundless ombres, which are perfect for spring. And I'm making a beginner-friendly quilt, so if you've never made a quilt before, or you just need to make one quick, then tonight's quilt is for you. And as a bonus, we're gonna have an extra video that gives you more ideas for walking foot quilting. Let's get to it. So here are the boundless ombres, the pre-cut that I'm gonna use. And what's so fun is the colors have a nice gradation, so we're gonna see a lot of different colors come out here. Now this pattern is called Weave It Be, and it uses fabric placement and all the different colors to create an interesting look that's really easy to put together. You can see I have the pinks, and the purples, all these beautiful colors. And if you want more details about the pattern, they're in the description box below. Well, I've gotta cut the pre-cuts, so let's get cutting. Mm, that's a floral bouquet with a hint of cotton. That is good. Now, we're gonna take my pre-cut strips, my two and a half inch strips, and we're gonna cut them into rectangles. And if you're a newer quilter, which I've been reading the comments, I know that some of you out there watching have never made a quilt. If you've been thinking about it, this is the time to do it. And what's great about pre-cuts is they already come pre-cut, obviously, but you get a range of colors. You don't have to go into the trouble of thinking about what colors you use on your quilt so it makes it really nice. Well, what I'm doing is just picking out a few strips. I'm gonna stack them on top of each other and then cut them using my rotary cutter and my ruler. Now, these are really the only things you need to get started besides a sewing machine, of course. So if you have a quilter in your life, you can maybe uh, steal or, I mean, borrow some of theirs. And that's how I got started. My husband's grandpa taught me how to quilt and I would just <clears throat> borrow his things, but he didn't mind, so it was great. Now when I lay out the strips, you can start to see that ombre color come out. That color placement is gonna create a fun effect when we put them together. And all these little rectangles are gonna make a really neat block that's easy to put together. I kinda like mixing up the colors as I cut. So pretty orange or pretty blue, doesn't matter. Now what I love about newer quilters is you don't have any bad habits, so you're way ahead of the rest of us. It's the more experienced quilters with our bad habits that tend to get in trouble when it comes to quilting. Now when I'm cutting these, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off that selvage. We don't need it, so it's just gonna get cut off. And then when I'm gonna cut my next one, I'm gonna use my ruler to line up on the fabric and cut it the length that I want it to be. So for instance, I want this rectangle to be 10 inches long, so all I have to do is set the 10 inch line along that edge and then cut. And this is great because if you've never rotary cut before, these nice short bits make it easy to practice, but never forget to close the rotary cutter. No cutting accidents, especially this time of night. So I'm gonna keep dicing this up into rectangles and it'll be time to cut the background fabric. Now this black background is really gonna make those bright colors pop off of it. And when you're cutting bigger chunks of fabric, the best thing to do is to have a drink. No, not really, I am, you shouldn't. The best thing to do is to make sure that it's folded selvage to selvage, those ends. And if you have a smaller mat, you can even fold it again. But I'm gonna make sure that both sides are nice and parallel. So that's gonna give me a good straight cut. And then I'm gonna straighten up that edge. And I need to cut two and a half inch strips by WOF. That's not WTF. WOF stands for width of fabric. So I'm gonna cut the whole strip, lining it up on the two and a half inch line. And then I'm gonna sub cut them into the smaller rectangles. Okay, now you get to pick the colors you're gonna use in your quilt, and each block uses two colors. It doesn't matter which one you pick, but try to go for a darker and a lighter, because it's gonna make this interesting weave effect. Trust me, we'll get there in a second. So I think I'm gonna go with this one, and you can sound a little artistic here if you want to as well, like, oh, I just love the juxtaposition of the peach and the blue. But once you decide what two colors you're gonna use in your block, we're gonna combine it with our background fabric. And what we'll do is sew a strip of background fabric to each side of one of the colors, and that's gonna make a strip unit or a strip set. So I'm gonna sew the first two by placing the right sides together. Now what's great about this solid fabric is there is no right side, but if it were a print, I would wanna make sure that the right sides are together. Now I'm using the quarter inch foot that comes with my machine. That's gonna help me make sure that it's nice and precise because really we want the seam to be somewhat close to a quarter of an inch. And then we have the first part of our strip unit, and I'm just gonna do the same on the other side. And the first strip unit is done, but I'm not gonna iron it quite yet because I'm gonna do the same with the other fabric. Two background strips on either side and then sew, sew, sew. Oh, 
Okay, I wanna cut into these, but I can't yet. I need to iron it. So I'm gonna flip them over, and we're gonna flatten those seams so that when we go to cut it, we get a nice cut. And in the pattern, she has us pressing it towards that center, so I'm gonna use my little iron and just carefully press it over. Now I'm not stretching it or pushing down because that can distort it, although it does feel a little bit more satisfying to really smash it down, but I'm gonna refrain and we're gonna keep that seam nice and flat. Let's flip it around. And if your piecing is a little more creative, you can use a little spritz of flatter just to help give it a little bit more of a hold. I'm gonna flip it over, one last press and do the same on the other side. Now this particular kit has the black background instead of white, so this is one of those rare occasions when I'm actually not pressing towards the dark side. Flip that over. I just love the last little spray, just to give it a little finishing touch. So now I'm just gonna flip this over to my cutting mat and we're gonna cut this up into sections. Much like I did the strips before, using my ruler, make these cute little pieces. And I'm gonna get four of these out of each strip unit. And look at that, eight different little units. And I love the ombre because you're starting to see some of those different colors come out. Well, we're gonna put this all together and make it into a block. So the first block is all laid out and ready to go. Now, one thing I wanna point out is you are gonna have some extra pieces left over. Don't worry, you didn't mess up. That just means we're gonna use those for another block on down the road. But right now, I can see how fun this is looking. I'm starting to see that weave come together and it's looking great. Now, when you're laying out your first block, if you've never made a quilt before, you might freak out like I did when I first started quilting and think, they're not matching. It's all right, once you sew them together, those seam allowances come into play and really take care of it. When it comes to putting this block together, I'm really just gonna sew them together in chunks. Well, let's see how that happens. So the four sections have been put together. I've given them a quick pressing and now I'm going to sew them together in a row and sew those rows together and my first block will be finished. Okay, it's the final seam for the block, but for the first time we're going to have matching seams. That means we kind of somewhat want these little things to come together when we're sewing it. So it's not anything scary. All I'm going to do is put them together, right sides together, and use pins to help hold it in place. I'm just going to try to line it up as even as I can so that they're right on top of each other and use that pin to help hold it. I'm gonna do the same on the other one. Now, if you've ever watched an episode of The Midnight Quilt Show, you probably know that I'm not a stickler on perfection, so we're just gonna get it as close as we can. I always say a finished quilt is better than a perfect quilt top, so don't stress too much about the perfection. Just try to get it close, and if it doesn't work, well, you got a lot more blocks to practice on. All right, now that it's together, I'm gonna take it to the machine and sew it. And these are nice, thin, cute little pins, but I'm still not gonna sew over them because I don't wanna break my needle. That's no fun. So as I approach the pin, I'll just stop, take it out, and then continue on. And there we go, not too bad. Well, I'm gonna press this and then make the rest of the blocks. So I have the first row of blocks finished and I'm gonna lay them out and see what it looks like. Now here's the thing about these blocks. There are no color placements that you have to use. There's no way to turn them wrong. They're completely interchangeable, so don't worry about it. And what I'll do is I'll usually lay out the first row and then see how the color is looking. But that's good. That means that you get to decide how you want it to look. So when I lay it out, I'm just thinking, hmm, does this look good? Now I know that's really artistic, right? But the idea is you're the one using it. So if you don't want two of the same blocks next to each other, then just scoot them over. If you don't want the pink going this way, then just rotate the block. I think sometimes as quilters, we tend to get too worked up in the details when we just need to lay it out and sew it together. So when I go to sew the blocks together in a row, what I'm gonna do is sew them together in groups of two and then sew the groups together. So let's get to it. With the second row in, we can really start to see all the fun colors that are gonna be in this quilt. One thing I wanna point out though, is we're gonna have some of these different colors coming up next to each other, and it's okay, it's supposed to be like that. We're not gonna freak out or anything. Well, I'm gonna sew this together and get the rest of the quilt top assembled. And this quilt top is finished. All that's left to do is quilt it. Now, you know I love quilting on a free motion quilting foot, but we're gonna take it a little bit easier tonight and use the walking foot option. This is great for newer machine quilters or if you want some nice, straight, geometric lines. And it just so happens I have a free bonus video that shows you some tips for quilting with your walking foot. You can find the information about that in the description box below. Well, let's get to the quilting. 
Okay, I've put on the borders to my quilt, I've basted my quilt sandwich, and if you're a newer quilter and you're not sure what all goes into that, you can check out a really cool video I did around Thanksgiving that shows you how to baste your quilt sandwich. And what I'm gonna do is use the quilting to enhance the weavy look of this quilt, and I'm gonna use the walking foot to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm running the foot of my machine along this piecing, and that's helping me keep the quilting line straight-ish, which I'm going for close enough, because close enough is good enough. And then what I'm gonna do is add another one on the other side, using the other side of the foot to run along the edge of that piecing. One thing I wanna point out, though, is for the thread, I'm using a light to medium gray. When you're picking out just one thread color for so many different colors of fabric, I like to go with a neutral that doesn't show up too much in any of the colors. So this gray isn't gonna be too drastic when I get the background fabric and it's not gonna show up too much even on that orange fabric. So what I'm doing is just lining up the foot on that side of the piecing. And what's great about this technique for machine quilting is it's great for beginners because the feed dogs are doing all the work, or it's great when you wanna get those somewhat straight lines. So I'm gonna keep doing those vertical lines. Okay, I've got a couple of my rows quilted. We can see here how it's really kind of enhancing the look of that design. Now what's fun is I'm gonna keep doing all those vertical lines and then I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing on these strips. And what it's gonna do is really create this fun woven look. The reason I do one direction before the other is let's say I get one direction all finished and I decide that that's enough of that, then I can go ahead and stop but I think I'm gonna go ahead and finish it all tonight. Now, if you're loving this quilt pattern, you can find the information about it, as well as the quilting diagrams that I put together for you. Shows you the turn in early option or the up all night, which adds just a little bit more quilting, and information for that video on how to use your walking foot. You can find that all in the description box below. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. I'll see you in just a bit. And there you have it, a quilt that looks much harder than it is thanks to those ombre fabrics and fun fabric placements. Plus some machine quilting that's great whether you're new at machine quilting or just want some straight lines. Now don't forget we have that bonus video that gives you more tips using your walking foot and we have all the information about that in the description box below. Make sure you comment on here and let me know what your favorite part of this quilt is and be sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss any of these episodes of the Midnight Quilt Show, do you? Well. It's been a great night. I'll see you in the next episode.